Welcome back to our series on good manners. We're the Etiquettes. I'm Doug, and you've met Kathy. Hi. And Rusty. Hi. And of course, you remember Sherry. Hello. And David. Hi. And who could ever forget Rambo? <laughs> We've already seen that we have some strong reasons for using good manners. Good manners help people feel comfortable with us, show others we care about them, and encourage others to care about us. Using good manners doesn't mean memorizing a long list of the right and wrong things to do. The secret to good manners is just paying attention to the needs and feelings of others. How to feel comfortable and at ease around other people, and how to make them feel comfortable around us, is what good manners is all about. The best way to help people feel good around us is to act in ways that show we care about them. Good manners. And a way to really put people off is to act in a way that makes them think we don't respect them and that we're only thinking about ourselves. Bad manners. David! I may get my very own way, but is it really cool? Well, we can certainly see how bad manners affect other people. Oh, yeah. Bad manners really put people off. This program is about manners at home. You know, we often think good manners are just for special occasions or to use with important strangers. But just because it's family and roommates, we can easily take manners for granted. But manners at home are especially important because people of different needs and personalities must live closely together. That's right. You know, some of you may no longer live at home. But the same good manners apply whether you're sharing an apartment or living in a dorm or a group home. Magic Johnson bringing the ball up court. 15 seconds left to miss the seventh and final game of the World Championship Series between the Boston Celtics and the Los Angeles Lakers. Angels all over Johnson like a cheap suit. Johnson, he jukes, he fakes, he spins, he brings it down court. He's at the baseline, burns in his face. Oh, he turns, he puts it up, it's up, it's going, it's going, it's in, yes! Yes, two points, the Lakers win the World Championship. The crowd is going crazy. Oh, they love that Magic Johnson. <sighs> oh, what a satisfying feeling that is. Yes. 
David, how is your mom home? Oh, man, I'll get her. Hey, Mom! Mom! Um, well, David, don't get up. I'll find it myself. Nosy has the four stays on the bag. Keeps the ball from going out right field. Something called teamwork. Melanie, I went to my Weight Watcher meeting last night, and I just feel so great. Oh, you look fabulous. Thanks. You know, I'm eating a lot better food now, so my whole body feels healthier. Oh, I can't tell you how good you look. Thanks. What do you want in your coffee? Um, three sugars. Sweet and low? No, three sugars. Oh, okay. And I've decided to buy a whole new wardrobe, and I'm going to buy all my clothes a size smaller, because I... Really think it'll be great. And and last night I found out that I lost five pounds. Five pounds? How yeah. great! <laughs> Thanks. You need to lose at least five more. I'm terribly sorry. Oh, that was a collection of bad manners if I ever saw one. <laughs> I'll say. Let's take a closer look. Your clothes are scattered all over the floor in the living room. Keep your personal things in your own room. improperly dressed for being in a part of the house that other people have to use. You were sitting with your feet on the furniture. Remember, other people have to use the furniture too. I left food wrappers all over the floor. Trash belongs in the waste basket. careless with your food on the furniture. It's open! When someone came to the door, you didn't get up to answer it. Hello? Oh, David? Uh, uh. I didn't greet the guest by name. When people come into your home, Make them feel welcome by using their name. <laughs> yeah, David, how is your mom home? Yes, yeah, I'll get her. Hey, Mom! I was shouting in the house. Don't yell to people in another part of the house. I decided to buy a whole new wardrobe. I'm going to buy all my clothes a size smaller. So... It's rude to walk between two people without excusing yourself and even worse, to interrupt their conversation. I really think it'll be great. And, and last night, I found out that I lost five pounds. Five pounds? How great! <laughs> Thanks. You need to lose at least five more. Finally, I top it off by making an embarrassing personal remark. Everything I've done has shown total disrespect for the guest and everyone that I live with. We've seen the wrong way to do things. Let's take a look now at how David would act with good manners. see the living room out there. Okay, thanks. Sure. Have a fry if you want. <laughs> okay.
Ma, Mrs. Griffin's here. She's in the living room. I can't tell you how good you look. Thanks. What do you want in your coffee? Um, three sugars. Sweet and low? No, three sugars. Oh. Okay. And I decided to buy a whole new wardrobe, everything a size smaller. That way I'll really feel motivated. Excuse me, Mom, oh, Mrs. Sure. Griffin. Sure, okay. And I found out last night at the meeting I lost five pounds this month. Five pounds? Yeah, I just worked really hard and I just did it. See how much smoother things go when you think of others and act with good manners? Let's look at that again. I was afraid you'd say that. time, David's wearing the proper clothes for around the house. If you're not in the privacy of your own room, show respect for your family or your roommates by dressing modestly. Use a tray for food that you bring into the living room. This keeps the food from spilling on the furniture or the floor. someone is at the door, get up promptly to see who it is. Hi, David. Hi, Mrs. Griffin. Come on in. Thanks. Greet the person by name and invite them in. Is your mother home? Uh, yeah, I think she's out back. Why don't you have a seat in the living room and I'll go get her? Okay, thanks. Sure. Show the visitor where to sit and ask them to wait while you go get the person they came to see. Notice how I made the guest feel comfortable by paying attention to her needs instead of my own? Here's another situation. How do you answer the door when it's someone you don't know? Hi there, Ed Fennell here to make your life happier with products from the Happy Household Company. But here we go. Uh-oh, ordinary well, household dirt. Oh no. What are we going to do? No problem when you have the suck o -matic. It cleans up dirt in the rug so easy, you'll love to clean. It even cleans up dirt on your clothes and in your hair. Oh, now your hair's messed up. What a problem. No problem when you have the Lady Godiva Beauty Brush. Two strokes, and once again, you're beautiful. Now the housework's all done. What are you going to do with the rest of the day? No problem when you read the Wonder World Encyclopedia. Volume 1 of 23 volumes. Just the Succomatic, the Beauty Brush, and the Encyclopedia. This is a $795 value. All yours for $149.95 if you sign here today. But sign here, know. sign here, well, and sign here, and here. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure doing business with you. Remember, you'll be hearing from us. Oh, uh, you really ought to lock this door. Yep. You see what can happen when you don't check to see who's there before opening the door. Good manners doesn't always mean being nice to people or letting other people make you do something you don't want to do. You can also say no with good manners. Who is it? Hello, I'm Ed Fenno from the Happy Household Company. Hi, who did you want to see? I'd like to see the lady of the house. I'm sorry, no one can come to the door now. Oh, how about the man of the house? I'm afraid no one can come to the door now. You'll have to try later. Oh, a friend of your mother's said I should stop by. Well, you'll have to try later. No one can come to the door now. Who is it? Check to see who it is before opening the door. Hello, I'm Ed Benno from the Happy Household Company. Hi, who did you want to see? Ask who they came to see. I'd like to see the lady of the house. I'm afraid no one can come to the door now. You'll have to try later. Oh, how about the man of the house? I'm sorry, no one can come to the door now. If no one else is home, say that no one can come to the door right now and ask the person to come back later. Oh, a friend of your mother said I should stop by. Don't say that no one else is home. Just keep telling them to come back later. Well, you'll have to try later. No one can come to the door now. When you bring someone new home, you show respect for your guests by introducing them to your parents or roommates. Come on in. Mom, this is Rusty, a friend of mine. I just met him at the courts. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Graham. Do you live around here? Uh, my family is moving into your neighborhood. Oh, 
Oh, great. A new friend. Yeah, isn't that great? Yeah. Hey, is there anything to drink? We're both pretty thirsty. Yeah, I just made some lemonade. Help yourselves. Great, right. thanks. Great. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, man. Yeah, you know, their father still picks out all of their material. Really? Yeah. I'm surprised the Osmonds are even together anymore. Well, I'm glad you could come over. When your friend is ready to leave, walk them to the door. All right, we'll see you later, dude. All right, take it easy. Okay. See you tomorrow. All right. Tomorrow. All right. Bye. Bye. What time? Uh, I don't know what, 2.30? Uh, yeah, no, no, 3. Three's good. Wait, no, wait, forget it, not 2.30. Make it... Make it uh, 3.30. 3.30 sounds good. All right, 3.30. Right, you got it. Better make it 4.30 just to be safe. All right, 4.30, that's All right. good. All right, we'll see you later. Don't forget my racket. All right, I'll have another practice a little bit. All right, and bring your sister. All right, yeah, you bring yours, okay? All right, take it easy. We'll have fun. All right. All right. those long, noisy goodbyes with friends where everyone is shouting goodbye until they're a half a block away. This is really annoying to neighbors, especially at night. And speaking of noise around the house, how's this one for bad manners? David! 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 down in the house so that you don't disturb others. others is often how we treat ourselves so it shouldn't surprise us that David's room looks like this imagine what this room feels like to someone who has to share it with him I wonder what that room would look like if it were cleaned up that is a noticeable improvement keeping your room neat is one thing but keeping the rooms that you share with family or roommates neat is very important like the bathroom. Who knows what horrors bad manners create behind the bathroom door? It's all yours. bathroom a mess shows a lot of disrespect for the people you live with. There's some good manners in the bathroom. <sighs> Try to dry out in the shower so that you don't track water across the bathroom floor when you get out. When you finish your shower, open the window so that the room will air out better. Unless it's raining, or it's snowing, or if there's hurricane force winds, well, then maybe you wouldn't want it. But generally, it's a pretty good idea. Also, spread the shower curtain so that it'll dry out better. And wipe your feet on the bath mat. Hang up your towel. Don't just let it fall on the floor. Guys, when you use the toilet, lift the seat up. And when you're finished, put it back down. Girls really don't like it if you leave it up. And if you use the last of the toilet paper, replace the roll. It only takes a second. Put the 
cap back on the toothpaste and put your personal things back where they belong. And before you go, make sure to wipe up around the sink. That leaves the bathroom nice and clean for the next person. That's good manners in the bathroom. Looks like our hero is on his way to breakfast. Let's see how some good manners and consideration for others can get the day off to a good start. Morning, everybody. Our first words in the morning can set the tone for the whole day. So, uh, good morning can make us and the people around us feel good. Oh, hi, David. Gonna take your driving test again today? Yeah. Gonna pass this time? Yes. Yeah. Wanna practice on the way to school? Sure. Wanna use my car? Yeah. Excuse me, I have to go get my helmet. Very funny. Very funny. And show an interest in the other members of your family. Or the people you live with. This is a good way to show people you care about them. I think the whole family got a good start on the day just by using good manners. Here's some good manners that shows respect for other people's privacy. Seriously, this guy that gave me the driving test was like four foot eleven. I'm serious, he could barely see over the dashboard. I passed my driving test. Hold on a minute. Knock before entering someone else's room. Excuse me. Yes. Can I borrow your walkman? before taking something that belongs to someone else. If you really want to show others you care about them and encourage others to care about you, do a little extra. Hi, Ma. Hi, David. What is it, my birthday? No, I just saw them and I thought they'd be nice. Here, why don't you go put them in some water? They're beautiful. Surprise the people you live with once in a while with a little special appreciation. Good manners isn't just following a bunch of rules. It's caring about other people. That looks like a good place to end our show on manners in the home. Good manners make the people that live with you feel good about you. Let's not save our good manners for special occasions. The home is a safe place to learn and practice good manners. By using good manners, we will develop good habits that will come easily. We'll naturally give others the respect and consideration they deserve. And they, in turn, will do the same for us. Thanks for being with us. We hope we'll see you again soon. In the meantime, mind your manners. <laughs> this is well, fun. So yeah. I don't care about anybody else. Why should they care about me? By myself, I'm kind of like that you remember Sherry hello and David hi and who could ever forget Rambo <laughs> we've already seen that we have some strong reasons for using good manners good manners help people feel comfortable with us show others we care about them and encourage others to care about us using good manners doesn't mean memorizing a long list of the right and wrong things to do 
The secret to good manners is just paying attention to the needs and feelings of others. How to feel comfortable and at ease around other people, and how to make them feel comfortable around us, is what good manners is all about. The best way to help people feel good around us is to act in ways that show we care about them. Good manners. And a way to really put people off is to act in a way that makes them think we don't respect them and that we're only thinking about ourselves. Bad manners. David! I may get my very own way, but is it really cool? All my friends and the girl I want keep me like fool. We can certainly see how bad manners affect other people. Oh, yeah. Bad manners really put people off. We're going to talk about manners at the table. Sharing food has always been a special time, not just for eating, but for getting together with people we trust and care about. Good manners help make this special time more enjoyable for everyone. We often think good manners are only for special occasions or to use with important strangers. Just because it's our family, we can easily take manners for granted, especially at the table. Yeah, good table manners make us look better and help those around us enjoy their meals, take the struggle out of eating, and make us more sure of ourselves. So let's look at how bad table manners can spoil a meal for everybody. Well, is Sherry coming to dinner? I think she's upstairs changing. Come in here. You call that dress? Relax. Well, I took the car in today. You were right. It was the muffler. Oh, no. Guess how much it cost? $40? $140. Honey, that's highway robbery. Well, I thought it was an awful lot, too. Maybe we should just go looking for a new car. Well, I wish we'd just get a new list paper. I've got to wait for the raise. It all depends on if we get the Penwick account at work. Can you pass the Brussels sprouts, please? Oh, sure, dear. Pass these to your mom. Blech. These things smell disgusting. How can you eat those things? Because they're good for you, that's how. You know, how come everyone's good for you smells like that? I don't know. Honey, I think Butterfield is walking all over you. I don't know. Maybe we should just go looking for a new car on Saturday. What do you think? Oh, I'd love that. I'd love a lemon yellow, let's say, Mom? Mom, we dissected this frog in biology class today. It was so neat. I mean, you cut into it with this knife, and all this juice squirted out of it, <laughs> and squirted all over Nancy, and she threw up all over the frog. <laughs> I had to take it over to the sink and wash it off so we can use it tomorrow, because we're going to take out the eyeball, cut it into that, and see what's in there. That was impressive. Oh, thank you. I worked hard. Let's take a look at just how bad those manners were. Well, is Sherry coming to dinner? I think she's upstairs changing. Come here. Call that dressed? You came to the table late and poorly dressed. Meals are often the only time we see each other, so don't make everyone wait. And be clean and neat. Eating with someone dressed like this could spoil anyone's meal. You started nibbling before anyone else was ready to eat. Generally, the napkin doesn't go under your chin. 
unless it's especially messy food. Guess how much it cost. You were reaching across the table instead of asking to pass the food. $40? $140. You were plate piling, trying to put too much food on your plate. Maybe we should just go looking for a new car. Oh, I wish we'd just get a new one, baby. We got away from the rain. It all depends on if we get the Finland account of work. You were picking through the food and touching pieces that you didn't take. Can you pass the Brussels sprouts, please? Oh, sure, dear. Pass these to your mom. This, this thing smells disgusting. How can you eat those things? Don't hurt the feelings of the person who prepared the food by complaining about it. Because they're good for you, that's how. You know, how come everything good for you smells like that? You had your elbows on the table. The only time you can put your arms or elbows on the table is between courses. Honey, I think Butterfield is walking all over you. I don't know. Maybe we should just go looking for new products. What do you think? You were chewing with your mouth open. Seeing the half-eaten food in someone's mouth could spoil anyone's appetite. Oh, I'd love that. I'd love a lemon yellow masseter. Mom, Mom, we dissected this frog for biology class today. It was so neat. I mean, you cut into it with this knife, and all this juice squirted out of it. <laughs> you were talking with food in your mouth. Meals are a time for conversation, but finish chewing before talking. And squirted all over Nancy, and she threw us all over the frog. I had to take it over to the sink. You are making everyone sick by talking about unpleasant things. By the way, the parents' talk about money problems wasn't all that pleasant either. Also, avoid argument and criticism at the table. Meals are a time to enjoy the food and one another. Well, now that we've got the bad manners out of the way, let's see how good manners can make a meal a good time to be together with family and friends. Well, you know, in spite of the frog story, the dinner still looked pretty good. Why don't you guys come join us, and we'll talk some more about good table manners. And who's going to have to sit next to her? Oh, don't worry. I'll behave myself this time. I think I'll stay here just to say thank you, though. All right. Good manners start before you get to the table. Yes, dress nicely, even if you're just eating at home. Oh, I like your tie. Oh, you should. It's yours. Come to the table on time. It's impolite to make people wait. If the table isn't already set, go ahead and help set it. I always forget. Does the salad plate go on the right side or the left side? Cups and glasses go on the upper right. The salad plate goes on the upper left. The soup bowl is set on top of the main plate. The knife goes on the right with the cutting edge facing inward. Then the spoon goes on the right. The fork goes on the left side of the plate. Sometimes there's a smaller fork for salads, which goes on the left of the other fork, and a larger spoon for soup, which goes to the right of the smaller spoon. The silverware is arranged so that the pieces you use first are on the outside. Finally, the napkin is folded and to the left of the fork. Make sure everyone else is ready before you start eating. Unfold the napkin onto your lap. And don't let the serving dish just sit next to you. Keep the food moving. No, thank you. If some food comes around that you don't particularly like, simply say no, thank you. Don't make a big deal out of it or don't complain. Just pass it on. Use the serving fork, never your own. And take the piece closest to you or the one you touch. And take modest portions. If you want more, you can always get seconds. <clears throat> don't slurp or blow on hot soup. Just let it cool down by itself. You can eat crackers with soup, but don't crumble up the crackers and put them in the soup. 
Oh, and when you're having soup, don't sip from the end. Sip from the side. When your soup is almost gone, you can tip the bowl away from you to get those last spoonfuls. Pass the bread, please. When passing food, pass the whole plate, not just a piece. Thank you. When using the butter, use the butter knife to put the butter onto your plate. And then use your own knife to butter your food. Oh, and when buttering bread, it's a good idea to break the bread into two pieces and then butter one half at a time. Cut your meat one piece at a time, making sure that your elbows don't fly way out at the sides. Then set your knife on your plate, not half on the table, and cut small pieces of meat so that you can finish chewing quickly. Right. Meals are a time to share friendships, so you want to participate in the conversation. Use your napkin before you drink, so you don't get any food on your glass. Then use your napkin again to wipe your mouth off after you drink. When using a napkin, pat your mouth like this. Don't scrub. <laughs> If you drop your silverware on the floor, don't pick it up and use it. Ask for a clean one. And if you get food stuck in your teeth, don't use a toothpick or your fingernail or do this. Just wait till you can clean your teeth in private. If you come across a bone or a pit, you don't have to hide it with your napkin. Just take it out quietly and put it on the side of your plate. Never put any food directly on the table. When you spill solid food, use your spoon or the back of a knife to pick it up as best you can, and then go on with your meal. Oh, I'm sorry. And if you spill any liquid, just apologize and offer to help the hostess clean it up. With any accident at the table, just apologize. Don't keep talking about it. If you get something hot, don't spit it out. Just take a drink of water to cool down your mouth. If you have to cough or sneeze, do it away from the table and into your napkin. <coughs> Never blow your nose into your napkin. phone rings, tell the person you'll call them back later. Don't get involved in a long conversation during a meal. Hi. No, I'll have to call you back. We're eating dinner. Okay, bye. <laughs> when you finish eating, place your napkin loosely to one side and point your fork and knife together toward the center of your plate. This lets everyone know that you've finished eating. Well, it looks like we all finished at about the same time. Pace yourself. Don't eat too fast, but don't eat too slow either. Ask permission to leave if the others haven't finished. Otherwise, wait for the hostess to get up. That was a great meal. I'm full. <laughs> yeah, it was great. But I think it was the conversation that made it really special. <laughs> well, next time, I'm cooking. After the meal, pitch in with the cleanup, but don't stack your dishes at the table. Carry them off individually. How was dinner? Oh, it was very good, and I behaved myself, too. Did you bring me back anything? No, I didn't. Like we said before, mealtimes are a time to relax and enjoy being together. So don't worry about memorizing all the fine points of table manners. Yeah, there are whole stacks of books written on table manners. Mm -hmm. I'm hungry. Then you should have come with us. If you're not sure about how to behave, just watch the host or hostess and do what they do. It was really very good. Just think about being more respectful of the other people at the table. And don't do anything you wouldn't want to see someone else do. Then you'll be using good manners. The reason for good manners is to show our consideration for others. To think of their needs, not our own. Good manners at the table are especially important because we share meals with the people we care about the most. It's often the only time we have to share with those people. So let's do all we can to make each meal special for everyone. 
the more we practice good table manners, the more confident we'll become, whether we're dining in the fanciest restaurant or just in someone else's home. Well, thank you for joining us, and we hope we'll be seeing you all again real soon. <laughs> In the meantime, mind your manners. <laughs> you remember sherry hello and david hi and who could ever forget rambo <laughs> we've already seen that we have some strong reasons for using good manners good manners help people feel comfortable with us show others we care about them and encourage others to care about us using good manners doesn't mean memorizing a long list of the right and wrong things to do the secret to good manners is just paying attention to the needs and feelings of others. How to feel comfortable and at ease around other people, and how to make them feel comfortable around us, is what good manners is all about. The best way to help people feel good around us is to act in ways that show we care about them. Good manners. And a way to really put people off is to act in a way that makes them think we don't respect them, and that we're only thinking about ourselves. Bad manners. David! My very own way, but is it really cool? All my friends and the girl I want keep me like fool. we can certainly see how bad manners affect other people. Oh, yeah, bad manners really put people off. Home is where we learn good manners and practice them, but school is the first place outside the home for using the good manners we've learned. Good manners help make the school day more enjoyable for teachers and classmates. Good school manners help us become better students and let us get the most out of all our classes and school events. We're going to start with the one place where bad manners are the worst. The classroom, the cafeteria the auditorium. Excuse me. Oh, I'm saving these. These are safe. These are taken. The whole row? Yeah, these are safe. Right. Sherry, Sherry, come here. Come here, save these. Come over. Go down, go down. 
Lots of Michelle Torre, come here, you guys. I saved these. Hi. Saved these. Hi. Hi. Michelle, what's that one? Michelle, Michelle. What? Michelle. 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 Michelle.
and thinking about others is what good manners is all about. How about those bulletin boards? They seem to have been the same for over six months. Where's your school spirit? Let's change those bulletin boards. Even if the speaker is boring, it's still rude to be trying to read or catch up on your homework. Lately, our school is a shambles. Well, it'll be tough to top those bad manners in the auditorium. David, do you think you're up to it? Just watch. More bad manners in school. Mr. Maples, could you take the gum out, please? All the way out, Mr. Maples. Oh. Thank you. So, as to continue, we have a group of artists who are pushed out of their homelands and are forced to create in, in an environment that is unusual to them, someplace they haven't been before. Now, we have here uh, an artist, I, I, I know that you've read this Hey, what page are we on? Page now 32. We have these writers who some people consider psychologists, some what people book? consider It's English, David. They're actually writing plays and literature, but within these plays and within this literature, they are expounding on their views of the world, which I must say is very, very grim. We have here uh, an artist, I, I, I know that you've read this poem, and it sounds... Hey, you got any paper? Paper costs money. Hey, you got a piece of paper? You got a pen? You lost my last one. Hey, give me a pen. Hey, give me a pen. French existentialist at this period. A bird could mean anything. It is a symbol of release, a symbol of flight. The bird is flying. He's going off. He's meeting someone. So we have the bird. Is it flies? It flies so high, so high. Now, what does that mean? A relative term. God bless you, Dave. Is high a spiritual term? Uh, uh, something that is saying that the mind has expanded, that it has reached a, a different spiritual plane. Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, let's just go to the assignment. I think I've digressed long enough. I've gone off on a tangent. Please forgive me. We all know about the assignment. Now, I'd like to ask you, uh, who can recite me, the me, poem me, Trees me, me. Oh, here, by here, Joyce here, Gilmore? Here, on me, on me, on me, on me, come on. I think that I shall never see a I think poem. that I shall never see. A poem as lovely as a tree, because a tree has um, branches, and, and they also have roots. And also, if you cut a tree right in half, and then you look at the rings, that's how many years old the tree is. I know that for an absolute fact. And um, then, if you could um, see a leaf, then maybe you could look at the veins or Excuse something. Me, and that's Ms. Griffin, really good. I'm sorry. It's very obvious that you haven't read the poem and you haven't memorized it. Could you please sit down? Thank you. Anyone else? I'm glad I don't have to teach that class. Yeah, that's the kind of student that can make class tough for everybody. <laughs> Let's take a look at those bad manners. You didn't hold the door, and you let it slam on somebody behind you. Lock 
floor is a mess. So whenever you open it, half of it falls on the floor. And you're not showing any consideration for other people. I rushed down the stairs without looking where I was going. This is not only rude, it's dangerous. I was not only late for class, but I caused a disruption when I came in. I was inappropriately dressed. In your school, it may be okay to be casual, but this is taking it too far. Mr. Maples, could you take the gum out, please? All the way out, Mr. Maples. It's okay to chew gum, but not in class. It's noisy and distracting. Did you ever try to concentrate when the person next to you was cracking gum? Oh. You showed total disregard for school property. Remember, you share that seat with other people. Hey, what page are we on? Page 32. What book? It's English, David. Paper. You got a pen? I didn't come to class prepared. Take responsibility for bringing the things you're going to need. Constantly borrowing is not only bad manners, it's a sure way to lose friends. It is a symbol of release, a symbol of flight. The bird is flying, he's going off, he's meeting someone. So we have the bird, is, it flies. It flies so high, so high. Now, you didn't cover your mouth when you sneezed. A classroom is a crowded place. So personal hygiene is especially important, like being careful when you cough or sneeze, and also coming to class clean and free of body odor. God bless you, Dave. Close to the assignment. I think I've digressed long enough. I've gone off on a tangent. Please forgive me. We all know about the assignment. Now, I'd like to ask you, uh, who can recite the poem Trees by Joyce Kilmer? Me, 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 me. Over here. Just here. Over here. Now, here's another one that really gets me. The know-it-all. She makes a big scene about raising her hand and knowing the answer to every question. You interrupted a classmate who was speaking. People get real tired of the know-it-all who doesn't care about what others have to say. Class is a give-and-take situation. If you want others to listen to you, you'd better listen to them. Excuse me, Miss Griffin. I'm sorry, it's very obvious that you haven't read the poem and you haven't memorized it. Could you please sit down? Thank you. Anyone else? A teacher really doesn't want people like that in class. There are the people who don't participate and just goof off with no respect for the rest of the class. And then there are those who are so eager beaver, no one else gets a chance to participate. We all goof off once in a while. I guess that's part of getting bored sometimes. But there are kids who have bad manners all the time. Yeah, they're funny for a while, then they start to wear on you. They're tiresome. Let's see the difference when David and I use good manners. Morning, Mrs. Graham. Hey, boy. 
morning, David. Must have seen that good man as well. pad for the rest of life. Knowledge is important, but equally important is our whole manner, how we treat other people. Even if we're smart and we have bad manners, we turn people off. And if we turn people off, they may not ever know that we're smart. Well, David, I think you're smart. Thanks for being with us. We hope we'll see you again soon. In the meantime, mind your manners. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I don't care about anybody else. Why should they care about me? Got no friends by myself. What kind of life would that be? I live my own way, but is it really cool? And all my friends and the girl I want keep me like a fool. on Good Manners. We're the Etiquettes. I'm Doug. And you've met Kathy. Hi. And Rusty. Hi. And of course you remember Sherry. Hello. And David. Hi. And who could ever forget Rambo. <laughs> We've already seen that we have some strong reasons for using good manners. Good manners help people feel comfortable with us, show others we care about them, and encourage others to care about us. Using good manners doesn't mean memorizing a long list of the right and wrong things to do. The secret to good manners is just paying attention to the needs and feelings of others. How to feel comfortable and at ease around other people, and how to make them feel comfortable around us, is what good manners is all about. The best way to help people feel good around us 
is to act in ways that show we care about them. Good manners. And a way to really put people off is to act in a way that makes them think we don't respect them and that we're only thinking about ourselves. Bad manners. David! I may get my very own way, but is it really cool? All my friends and the girl I want keep me like fool. We can certainly see how bad manners affect other people. Oh, yeah. Bad manners really put people off. We've learned that good manners are important in home and in school. Now, the final test is how we use our good manners in public, how we treat people we may never see again. Why should I care about people that I may never see again? Oh, well, you're missing the point. Good manners aren't like a suit that you can take on and off. Oh, you mean I'd have good manners without my suit? I don't know. I've never seen you without your suit. Can you imagine what life would be like if people used their good manners only around their friends? Oh, I'd be afraid to go out in public. Ooh. All that pushing and shoving. And people playing loud radios on the bus. Oh. Mm -hmm. And sticking gum under the seats. Or cutting in line at the movies. Right, it'd be a jungle out there. Would you protect me? Okay, let's look at how one person's bad manners can turn a public place into a jungle. Right, Rambo? <laughs> finding the bad manners in that scene. No problem. This is one of my pet peeves. People who play their radios loud in public. First of all, I didn't wait my turn. And by cutting in line, I pushed the person in front of me out of the way. 
That was not only rude, but I could have hurt her. It's also good manners to let the elderly or people with disabilities go ahead of you. I tried to get on the bus before letting the other people get off. And this is the second time I've hit someone. No one likes to be bumped or pushed. Hey, Chuck, how much? I was being too personal. Don't use nicknames or personal names with people you don't know. 50 cents. Hey, you got any change? You didn't have your change ready and had to bother another passenger for money. Don't ask others to be responsible for things you should take care of. I knew I was going to take the bus. I should have had my change ready. I took up a whole seat by sprawling on it and leaving my feet in the aisle. I continue to act like I'm the only one on the planet. I've taken up a seat meant for two people, and I'm ignoring the consequences of leaving my feet in the aisle. Ow! Wait! Yeah. Yeah. Are you all right? Bambo, are you all right? Hey, that's really good. You an artist? Wow. Hey, you're not an artist. I know who you are. You're on that TV show. I watch you all the time. What's the name of that show? Yeah, I know. Because it's the only TV I watch. I watch Wednesday nights, Channel 5, all night long. I was invading another person's privacy by leaning over the seat and by continuing a conversation she really wasn't interested in. Late at night, and you got caught in the swimming pool by the gym teacher, and you got in big trouble with the janitor. Wait a minute. Oh, God. You're not, you're not in the TV show. You work at the supermarket I shop in. No, hey, what do you not. call those blows? You might stop. Hey! You weren't watching for your stop. Then you had to rush to get off the bus. <laughs> David, you continue to surpass yourself. Pretty bad, aren't I? Let's see how the whole scene changes with good manners. Turn down your radio in public. If someone else can hear it, you're invading their privacy. Don't impose your musical tastes on others. Morning. Have your change ready before getting on the bus. Wait your turn. Allow other people to get off before getting on. Let the lady go first. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Greet the driver. Everybody likes to be greeted in a friendly manner. ahead for your bus stop so that you don't have to rush off at the last second. Don't talk to people you don't know, especially if they don't seem interested. Let's stop here for a minute. How do you know when somebody's not interested in making conversation? Well, I guess one way to tell is when they don't look at you. Nice weather we're having. Or when they don't answer. Uh, Come here often? No. Or when they just nod their heads or give one-word answers. Well, by now I should know that she doesn't want to talk to me. Well, that wasn't easy. You're very hard to resist. I know. But what if you're on a crowded bus or in a public place and someone bothers you? Okay. I'll pretend to be an obnoxious person. Well, who's pretending? <laughs> and I'll sit down next to you and say hi. Hello. 
I see you on this bus a lot. What's your name? Kathy. Kathy what? What's your last name? I don't give out my last name. Well, you must live around here. Where do you live? I don't give out my address. Oh. Well, can I call you sometime? What's your phone number? I don't give out my phone number. Aw, oh, come on, Kathy. I'm a nice guy. Mm. If someone touches you or bothers you, don't argue with them. Just get up immediately. And if they still bother you, tell the bus driver. Nice going, Doug. <laughs> what? what? Doug. Oh, God. Is that a you meet girl? I was just pretending. Uh -huh. Doug. Here's another good manner on a bus. Here, take my seat. If the bus is crowded, offer your seat to elderly or handicapped people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. David, you are truly an inspiration to us all. Let's look at some other bad manners in public. Anybody have any ideas? One of my pet peeves is when people walk on the wrong side of the sidewalk. You know, opposite of everyone else. Oh, I know what you mean. Oh. Let's take a look. Great movie. What I mean, kind of movie? Well, there's this monster, and the uh -huh. monster just comes up out of the ocean, uh -huh. and, and he just starts eating everything inside. It was really neat. Look at all gooey. Oh, there's there like slime, oh, there slime all over, over there. Uh -huh. All over, and it was really neat. There was a lot of blood? Oh, lots of blood. And he great. eats this car. He just eats the car. Did anybody die? Oh, yeah, lots of people. There's dead people all over the place. Oh, great. I'm so crazy. Oh, no, look at this one. Oh, look at, she's lost. She's talking to herself. She's lost. She's talking to herself. She doesn't know where she is. No. <laughs> where do they get these people? I don't know. I mean, don't, I, don't they have jobs? I, they must not. I mean, don't they have lives? You know, I mean, what's wrong with them? Would you want to be them? No, absolutely oh, look, not. Look at that guy. Look at that guy. He looks so weird. That. I know. Ugly like clothes. You smell, buddy. Really? Oh, no, look at her. Oh, great. They both is that smell. her hair or what? Oh, yeah, that's her hair. It just, no, like, you, you know, mine is natural blonde. <laughs> Lisa. Yeah, Lisa. Well, buy her shirts. 
Walt, she's my friend. Well, so what? I'm not your friend? Well, Lisa's nicer to me than you are. Well, I want this shirt. Well, I don't have enough money. Well, we're going to have to put on your dad's credit card. Why my dad's? Why not your dad? Because you, because. Because I want it. Well, fine. I want this shirt. All right. Okay. I want these. Okay, let's go. All right. We want these. Here. Hey, can you sign here? Yeah, sure. Wait a minute. I didn't know it was going to cost this much. How much is it? Look. Well, that's too much. Yeah. Let's not get them. Can we have our money back? Here. We can spend our money better in somewhere else. Let's go. Hold it, hold it, hold it. There's enough bad manners there to talk about for a week. <laughs> we were pretty bad, huh? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I thought I was the king of bad manners. Those manners were so bad, I think they deserve a second look. Uh -huh. and, and he just starts eating everything inside. It was really neat. Oh, you weren't paying attention to where you were going. When you're walking in public, you have to be aware of other people. A good rule is, when you see someone coming, move to the right. We didn't apologize when we bumped into someone. Accidents can happen to anyone in a crowded place, but this one could have been avoided. You were so involved in your own conversation, you forgot you have to share the sidewalk with other people. Where did they get these people? It looks like he just got out of jail. I know, it's <laughs> not. Oh, no, look at this one. You were saying unkind things out loud about other people. The world is made up of all kinds of interesting people. And people watching can be fun, but keep your comments and judgments to yourself. being too friendly in public. It's really embarrassing for other people to see two people hugging and kissing like that in public. Affection like this should be reserved for a private place. You'll find out if you go inside and look. Well, do you have money? You? Yeah, I have some money. Well, it's me. I'm not sure what... You were blocking the doorway. Don't hold conversations or stand in a place where people are coming and going. I'm not sure what the hell I've never even been here before. Well, you only know if you're going to see. I don't know. Well, come on. Let's just log. We're here. All right, all right. We didn't hold the door for the person behind us. Don't ever let a door slam in someone's face. Look at these. Ooh, do you like the yellow? No, I don't like I want purple. Look for purple. Purple? I don't see, see any purple. Where? We were handling all the clothes and leaving them in a mess. This was not only inconsiderate for the other customers, but it created unnecessary work for the salespeople. Look at these, are so cheap, though. You know, I mean, they fall apart the minute you wash them. Oh, yeah, they look it. They look cheap. Well, here, I want... You were saying bad things about the clothes in a way that everyone could hear. Being in a store is a lot like being in someone else's home. So be careful how you handle things and keep the negative comments to yourself. Well, how much are the socks? Yeah, we would like some socks and some purple shorts. Yeah, four dollars. Um, well, I'll tell you what, kids. What? Here, can I'll you... just get the manager. Can okay? I have a yellow one like that in Here. my size? Here, yes. You were rude to the salesperson. Salespeople are there to help you, but they're not your servants. I'm not loaning you money. I just loaned you money last week. Well, I thought you gave that to me. No, I didn't give it to you. Maybe you spent money on Lisa. I saw you with her in the quad. Lisa? Yeah, Lisa. You were talking about personal things in public. Conversations about personal matters, especially arguments, should be held in a private place. Hey, can you sign here? Yeah, sure. Wait a minute. I didn't know it was going to cost this much. How much? Look. Well, that's a lot. Let's not get it. Can we have our money back? And finally, we changed our mind after paying. 
We weren't very careful about choosing what we wanted in the first place. Oh, I think we're ready for some good manners now. You'll have a chance to redeem yourselves. Uh, yeah. Walk on the right-hand side of the sidewalk with the flow of traffic. Yeah, oh. oh, excuse me. If you accidentally bump into someone, excuse yourself and say you're sorry, even if it wasn't your fault. Sorry. Oh, I'm glad. I like it, too. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Be modest with your affection in public. An arm around the waist or holding hands is okay. Hold the door for the person behind you. Do you like the red one? Yeah, I do like the red. I like the blue too, though. Do you like the stripes? When you're looking for things to buy, handle them carefully, then put them back the way you found them. Make sure that what you're buying is what you really want. It's okay to return something if it doesn't fit or there's something wrong with it, but it's rude to take something back just because you decide you don't like it. How about a button-down shirt? I think I like that. Right behind you. These are great. Everyone's buying them. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that's nice. I think I'll get it. All right. Okay, well, if there's nothing else, I'm going to be right over here, okay? Okay. Be pleasant with salespeople. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Welcome. I'll just mention it. Okay, well, let's get these. All right. I like you two much better with good manners. I just thought of another place where you see a lot of bad manners. Where? The movie theater. We're in a movie theater, and of course, we're late. And it's dark, and we have to find a seat. Oh, here's a wait, seat. No, I want to go up. Oh, I want to be right. closer. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, jeez. Here, sit here, sit here. Okay, you've seen this movie before. What's happened so far? Oh, well, this is great. You see that woman there? She's yeah. going to leave her husband in about 10 minutes, and nobody thought she was ever going to leave. Are you kidding? Yeah. yeah, and it's so great because everyone thought they're busy. At least we don't have to go to the snack bar. You want a grape? Okay. So what happens next? Oh, well, the ending is the best part of the whole thing. Because it turns out everybody dies except that one guy there in the sweater, the brother. No. Everybody what dies about the dog? Him. Yeah, the dog dies too. But the thing that's great is that the brother's the one that you thought would die, and he's the only one that lives in the whole movie. Shut up. I paid good money to come here, and you're, you're inconsiderate talking. Not only am I sitting next to a lady from Fruit of the Loom, but now I, I, I know what happens to everyone in this movie, except that one guy standing right there. Oh, well, he ends up on a tropical island at the very oh, end. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, the very oh, end, the last oh, shot yeah. is him in the sand. So he gets away crazy. then? Oh, he gets away with everything, and nobody even knows. Oh, yeah, so they show him with the, on the beach and everything with the beautiful girl next to him. Well, you guys went through all the things I don't like people to do in the movies. Let's take a look at them. Oh, here's a wait, seat. No, I want to go up. I want to oh, be closer. Okay. Oh, wait. You were late to the movie, and you trampled over people without excusing yourselves. Okay, you've seen this movie before. What's happened so far? Oh, well, this is great. You see that woman there? Not many people wear large hats to the movies these days. But the point is, there are people in back of you. Moving around or constantly getting up and down can block their view. Hey, at least we don't have to go to the snack bar. You want a grape? Okay. So what happens next? Oh, well, the ending is the best part of the whole thing. Because it turns out everybody dies except that one guy there in the sweater. The brother. This is one of the most irritating things to people in the theater when others talk or whisper during the movie. Movie! Shut up! I paid good money to come here, and you're, you're inconsiderate talking. Not only am I sitting next to a lady from Fruit of the Loom, but now I, I, I know what happens to everyone in this movie, except that one guy standing there. 
Oh. Well, he ends up on a tropical island at the very end. Oh, 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 And if talking wasn't bad enough, you were spoiling the movie for other people by talking about things before they happened. If you arrive at the theater late and the movie's already started, wait in the back until your eyes get a chance to adjust to the dark. Then the man should go down the aisle first until he finds a seat. When he does find a seat, he lets the woman go first. And if you have to pass in front of someone, be sure to say, excuse me, excuse me. And face the screen, not the people in the seats. Excuse me. Oh, and uh, watch out for the people in front of you, too. And you shouldn't talk during the movie. Much less give away the ending. I really like the movie, Doug, except for one thing. What's that? Well, I forgot the popcorn. Why is it always considered good manners for the guy to hold the door and let the woman go through first? It's an old custom, but it's still a way some men have of showing respect for women. Does that mean I can't open the door for you? Sure, if you get to the door first and you don't feel like waiting for me to open it for you. I'll wait. Being a member of the community is a tremendous privilege, but for the community to be a nice place, each of us has to use good manners with everyone we meet in public. Thanks for being with us. We all hope to see you again soon. In the meantime, mind your manners. This is fun. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I don't care about anybody else. Why should they care about me? I got no friends. I'm by myself. I'm kind of like that. back to our series on good manners. We're the Etiquettes. I'm Doug, and you've met Kathy. Hi. And Rusty. Hi. And of course you remember Sherry. Hello. And David. Hi. And who could ever forget Rambo. We've already seen that we have some strong reasons for using good manners. Good manners help people feel comfortable with us, show others we care about them, and encourage others to care about us. Using good manners doesn't mean memorizing a long list of the right and wrong things to do. The secret to good manners is just paying attention to the needs and feelings of others. How to feel comfortable and at ease around other people, and how to make them feel comfortable around us, is what good manners is all about. The best way to help people feel good around us is to act in ways that show we care about them. Good manners. And a way to really put people off is to act in a way that makes them think we don't respect them and that we're only thinking about ourselves. Bad manners. David! I may get my very own way, but is it really cool? All my friends and the girl I want keep me like fool. Right. Take a moment about the other guy. <laughs> 
we're going to talk about situations where many of us feel awkward and uncomfortable. We're going to talk about the proper way to greet people, make introductions, and start conversations. Meeting new people? Making conversation? Oh, we're going to make it easy. Part of being comfortable when we meet new people or make conversation is knowing the right way to do it. Knowing the proper way to greet people will help us feel confident and good about ourselves. And when we feel good about ourselves, other people will feel good about us. Good manners takes a lot of the fear out of meeting new people. First, let's have an example of how not to greet someone. <laughs> oh, good man. Mr. Cessna, this is our new custodian, Mr. Maples. Yo, how's it going? Whoa, look at those shoes, would you? Wow, those are some set of pups. What'd they cost, 100, 200 bucks? Well, I bet you don't blow over the stiff breeze, neither. <laughs> yeah. Well, well nice, nice job you're doing on the floor here. What are you, crazy? This floor looks terrible. Look at this. Look at that. It comes right off in your hands. Oh, well, I got this stuff at home that you could spill dog food on, and you can't even tell. I mean, this stuff is incredible. If you want, I could probably go out and get you some, bring it in. Oh, but, gee, uh, um, Mr. Mr. Cessna, we've got to go. We're going to be late for that board meeting. Okay. Uh, nice meeting you, Mr. Maples. Hey, yeah, same with you. And uh, listen, don't take no guff from any junior execs. Oh, I won't. Later. Well, I doubt if our janitor will get promoted. Well, let's look at those bad manners again. Yeah. I didn't stand when I was being introduced. By not getting up, I made the other person feel that I didn't care about meeting him. Yo, how's it going? My handshake was too hard and too long. A handshake is a simple greeting, not a test of strength. Whoa, look at those shoes, would you? Wow, those are some set of pups. What do they cost, 100, 200 bucks? Well, I bet you don't blow over the stiff breeze, neither. <laughs> you made remarks that were too personal. You don't know him that well. Yeah. Well, well nice, nice job you're doing on the floor. Are you crazy? Look at this. This is dull. I was being unnecessarily disagreeable. When you meet someone for the first time, you want to make a good impression. Especially if he's your boss. Look at that. Come right off in your hands. Well, I got this stuff at home. I was hogging the conversation. Meeting someone is an opportunity to learn something about them. And how can you learn anything if you don't give them a chance to talk? You could spill dog food on, and you can't even tell. I, mean, I wasn't looking at the person I was talking to. Eye contact is a sign of interest. Excuse me, pardon me. We've got to get to that board. Good. Very nice meeting you, Mr. Maples. Uh, yeah, same back at you. And listen. When I was leaving and wanted to shake your hand, you ignored it. Same with you. And uh, listen, don't take no guff from any junior execs. Oh, I won't. Later.
see how bad manners could ruin meeting someone for the first time. Well, let's look at how David could have made a better impression on that visitor using good manners. Mr. Cessna, this is our new custodian, Mr. Maples. How do you do, Mr. Cessna? Nice to meet you. Stand up when you're being introduced. Repeat the person's name. Give a firm, brief handshake. Nice to meet you. Good to have you aboard. Uh, good work you're doing on this floor here. Well, well thank you. I'm, I'm trying. Oh, you're doing good work. See, we got to get you some new equipment. That'll be nice. Okay. Make eye contact with the other person. Make some comments of your own. You don't want to do all the talking, but you don't want to be silent either. Oh, i got to be running along to a board meeting, but it's been nice meeting you. Oh, you too, sir. Hope to see you again soon. Okay. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Let's go over some of the things we learned about how to greet someone and how to make conversation. Hey, what happened to, uh, what's her name? Oh, oh yeah, uh, well, she's coming right now. I'll introduce you. Remember to stand up when you're being introduced. Kathy, I'd like you to meet Doug. Always introduce the girl to the boy or the older person to the younger person. Since Kathy is both, no problem here. <laughs> Hi. Very nice to meet you, Kathy. That's right. Remember to repeat the person's name that you've just met. Don't offer to shake hands with a girl. Wait for her to put out her hand and then shake hands with her. Now that Doug and Kathy have met, they want to start talking to each other, we think. A good way to start a conversation is by finding something the other person likes to talk about, by asking a question. So, Kathy, do you like movies? Yeah, I love movies. Well, what's your favorite? Um, Reform School Girls. It's so funny because it's like a prison movie, but it's funny, too. And then there's that crazy Wendy O'Williams, and then there's that little girl with the, the little stuffed animal or a kitty or a puppy, and then somebody... Now that you've got the conversation started, remember to listen to the other person instead of just thinking about what you're going to say next. Conversations aren't all talking or all listening. Share the talking. You like that movie? Boy, are you off the wall. That was the dumbest movie I ever saw. It's okay to disagree with someone, but do it politely. Here's a better way. I know a lot of people who like that movie, but I thought it had too much violence. Avoid personal questions. Is it my imagination, or is one of your ears lower than the other? A good rule is to never ask a question that you wouldn't want to answer yourself. And stay away from unpleasant subjects like this. Do you have any pets? My dog got run over by a truck yesterday. You should have seen it. He was just all over the place. Oh, oh, I just had an operation. You want to see it? Here's the scar right in here. It's right there. It's real big and long. They took 23 stitches, and they opened me up, and there was like, I don't know what they did, but they just reached in and took out a bunch of stuff that I don't need. <laughs> they really need. And there was gore. I mean, I've saved it. It's in my dressing room. Mean what you say and say what you mean. Don't give people false compliments. That sure is a nice tie. My dad's birthday is coming up. Where can I get one? But don't hurt people with the truth, either. That's the ugliest tie I ever saw. Why would you wear that? If someone gives you a compliment, don't brush it off. That's a very nice dress you're wearing. Oh, no, it isn't. It's one of my old ones. It doesn't look very pretty on me. It would have been better for Kathy to say, Thank you. I'm glad you like it. What are you doing later on? You want to go out? Dog. Oh. You want to go out? Making conversation isn't hard. Find something you both like to talk about, listen, and wait for the other person to finish talking. We're all concerned with fitting in being accepted and respected. We want to feel comfortable and relaxed wherever we go, instead of wondering if we're doing the right thing. When we practice good manners, we can be at ease in any social situation. We don't have to be afraid to meet someone new or carry on a conversation. We can just relax and have more fun. We'll be bringing out the best in others and let them see the best in us. Thanks for being with us. We all hope to see you again soon. In the meantime, Mind your manners.
This is fun. Oh, yeah. I don't care about anybody else. Why should they care about me? Got no friends. I'm by myself. What kind of life would that be?